Have you ever set a goal to do something and then it's like all hell broke loose to try to stop you from accomplishing that goal? And you wondered, why did I try this to begin with? Why is this so difficult? If you have, you're not alone. I'm going to share with you three key principles of making positive progress, including overcoming the adversary in my personal journey and give you an update of everything that's been going on for the past years. I promised I would. Stay tuned. Welcome to Stories of Hope in Hard Times, the show that explores how people endure and even thrive in difficult times, all with God's help. I'm your host, Tamara K. Anderson. Join me on a journey to find inspiring stories of hope and wisdom learned in life's hardest moments. Hello and welcome to another episode of Stories of Hope and Hard Times. I'm your host, Tamara K. Anderson, and I'm so excited to be with you today. I promised you that as I paused this podcast to launch Women Warriors of Light, the group that God has kind of been nudging me to start for uh, several years now, that I would give you progress updates. And it's been about a year since I've done that. So I'm, I apologize that I haven't done that sooner. I have been feverishly working towards this goal. And I am so excited to tell you that we launched, that Women Warriors of Light launched on March 28th. We had our official launch. A virtual launch, and it was wonderful. And I am so happy that it's finally started, but it's the beginning of the beginning. People are like, aren't you glad it's done? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's the beginning of the beginning. And I have to tell you guys, I've started a new podcast and I'll tell you about that at the end of this episode. But first I want to talk you through uh, some of the struggles that I've experienced over the past year. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who's ever felt that they needed to act on something only to have the adversary just open up the gates of hell and just try to stop you. Um, that is really what I've gone through this past year, year and a half. Um, a lot of fear, uh, he's throwing at me a lot of negativity in my mind. Like, you can't do this. It's too big. It's too much. And yes, it it is. it has been very big and it's been too much for just me, but God has blessed me. Um, there have been times that I wondered if I would make it. And, and I wasn't sure <laughs> because it was hard and it was heavy. There were nights when I cried. And cried to my husband and just said, I don't know if I can. It's too hard. Um, I'm struggling with things that I've never struggled with my entire life, you know, and um, and just the discouragement and the fear factor that Satan throws at you when when you're trying to make positive progress uh, was heavy and oppressive and overwhelming. And um, there were times I really wanted to give up. I'll be honest. Um, and so I, I guess the first thing that I learned is that anytime you want to make forward progress in your life, Satan and his our hosts of <laughs> devils is going to want to stop you. Uh, you know, it's not any surprise when I pause and think about it that what God wants for us is eternal life. He wants us to come home to him. And what Satan wants is he wants to stop our progress because that's what being damned means. It means having your progress stopped. If you think about a dam stopping the progress of water, that's what Satan wants. He doesn't want us to move forward in our progress. And so um, as I moved forward and it felt, sometimes it felt like I had big concrete bricks on my feet <laughs> And oh, one little baby step at a time. And sometimes it felt like I would take those steps forward and something would pull me back. Um, I learned that when we are making forward progress, whether it's with a goal or we're moving out of 
perhaps an addiction or some, anything that moves our life forward in a positive way. Maybe you're going back to school. Uh, maybe you're trying to help someone in need that maybe it's a child, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a parent to expect opposition, expect that things aren't just going to open up and it's going to be easy going. And the reason I pondered that and said, why is it so hard? And, 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 and things from the scriptures popped into my mind. Think of the two gardens that are talked about in the scriptures, the garden of Eden, the garden of Gethsemane, good things were moving forward in both of those places. And yet Satan showed up and they became places where it was tough and tough decisions had to be made. And and so it shouldn't surprise us since from the very, very beginning of time, it's been hard when we try to make forward progress because we have an enemy here on earth. Um, but I've also learned, and this is one of the key points to kind of counterbalance that, is that God helps us line upon line, precept upon precept, he just told us. There are also growing pains because where we want to go isn't who we are yet. And so as we grow to become that newer, better person, it requires a little bit of refining in us. So I guess what I learned is that anyone making forward progress, whether it's Adam and Eve, whether it's Jesus Christ, is going to experience hard times moving forward. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be seamless. And I think something in the back of my brain had thought, I am doing God's work. He's calling me to do this. Things will be, things will flow. Things will be easy. And certainly there have been moments where that happened, but there has been so much resistance. Um, and <laughs> it just helps me realize that, you know, the adversary is alive and well and, and, and is trying to stop the work of God from going forward as he always has. And he, just like he wants to stop God's work from going forward, he wants to stop you from moving forward and me from moving forward and doing good things. I loved uh, what one of the gals said at, um, the launch that I had for Women Warriors of Light, she said, don't doubt in the night what you learned in the day. And I thought that is so true. That's one of the key things I learned as I tried to push forward was that Satan always tries to make us doubt these impressions that we get, these thoughts that pop into our head. They're good things that move us forward, that allow us to help someone. Um, but, and so doubt is one of his biggest tactics, also discouragement and uh, negative thoughts. Those are key things to use. So key principle number one is if you are going to move forward in your life, expect resistance. Don't expect that it's going to be smooth sailing. <laughs> Trust me, it won't. <laughs> but the good news is, Principle number two, God can strengthen and empower you or me to do anything. Um, I kind of go back to my mantra that I learned years ago when my kids were diagnosed with autism, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I can. Were there days of weeping? Absolutely. Did joy come in the morning as the scripture promises? Yes. There were times when I was trying to work out complex technology stuff on the back end of our website that we've been building. And I went to my husband and I was crying and I'm like, this is too hard for me to figure out. I had a website gal that was helping me, but you know, it took a labor of love and lots of people working to get this thing off the ground. And I had to help things that were beyond my capacity. I had to learn how to do. And there were times that I prayed for technology angels to be with me because, oh my goodness, it was hard. It was super, super hard. Um, I also learned, so 
Another thing that I loved was that God does send angels to be with us. Just like an angel comforted the savior in the garden of Gethsemane when he was going through probably the hardest thing that has ever been witnessed on this earth, suffering and paying for our sins. An angel went and comforted him. And I know that angels came and comforted with me and uh, were with me in those times because I needed help. I couldn't do it by myself. Other times they were people who showed up in my life and just said, I feel like I'm supposed to be involved in this organization. How can I help you? And I just thought, oh, thank you because I can't do it on my own. So God sends angels. And also sometimes he sends angels within our own family to help and strengthen. I know that uh, my kids were angels at times. They came and they, you know, my husband said, okay, you guys got to help make dinners because mom is super busy right now. And so they would take turns making dinners on certain nights for the week. Was it consistent? No, but it was less that I had to be thinking about and doing as we uh, got ready and launched Women Warriors of Light. So sometimes the angels can be uh, people in our own family. Or maybe it's, we don't have angels in our own family. Maybe we need help from the outside. And I did have help from the outside. I had some key people step up and say, hey, I want to help with this. And others I had to ask and say, hey, can you help with this? And they said, yes, I would love to help with this. So God strengthens us to do anything. But sometimes those strengthening uh, people come in the form of both angels seen and unseen. Um, the, the third principle that I learned for making positive progress was that if I'm going to do something bigger than has ever been required of me, that I need to level up. Um, and so I had to make forward progress as a person, um, getting rid of things that were holding me back, especially in that battle, that constant battle with Satan, over the last couple of years, I had to eliminate things that were dragging me down that perhaps brought darkness in and bring more things into my life that were adding light and positivity. Um, and Heavenly Father, God inspired me to know what those steps were, you know, stop watching that kind of thing. Stop reading that kind of book. You need to be uh, reading your scriptures. You need to be doing things that bring light into your life. Um, also with all the added stress, I had to uh, start an exercise program that was better for me. Um, and, and I did, I had to walk more. I've started uh, strength training and stuff like that. Things that I needed to do physically, but I was leveling up in several areas of my life. And because when when we're stressed, it takes a toll on our bodies. And I'm not saying that I didn't have bowls of chocolate ice cream sometimes. I sure did. <laughs> but um, I had to level up in several areas of my life. Getting rid of things that drug me down, that brought darkness into my life, and adding things that increased my life or adding them with more frequency. I remember... Uh, one particular day, I was really feeling the weight and the pressure of launching Women Warriors of Light. And um, I was driving to a place where I could feel God's peace and God's holiness because I needed it more in my life. And um, as I was driving, I uh, often I will put on uplifting music that will calm and inspire and uh, lift me up when I feel the forces of the adversary attacking with greater frequency. <laughs> and I had a song pop up that wasn't on my playlist that I had never heard before. And it is uh, an old Christian hymn about standing on the promises of Christ, our Savior, and standing on the promises of God. And that song resonated with me. And it buoyed me up and it was like God kind of peeking into my heavy weight and saying, Hey, remember you're doing what I asked you to do. And I'm going to fulfill my part. 
I'm going to fulfill my promise that I will help you with this. And so it was little moments like that, that kept me going. Um, sometimes it was a friend talking to a friend and talking to a friend about a dilemma that I was facing and, and sometimes just bouncing it off of people helped me solve the problems. But what I realized in this third principle about how I needed to level up in all areas of my life is that God helped me as I moved forward just inch by inch and line by line and precept by precept forward. Um, he blessed me with the people that I needed. He blessed me with an amazing advisory board that are all over the nation who have been awesome. He blessed me with an amazing co-founder. Wendy Christensen, who has been super instrumental. And I could just name several people who I could not have gone, come this far without. We had two amazing teams of interns from a local university that helped us with several key pieces. Um, and so I am thankful. I guess I'm here to tell you that even though it's been hard, it is. it has been a good growing experience for me. And I'm not saying that I'm done growing because um, the resistance hasn't stopped. So I know that forward progress still needs to be made. Uh, but I've learned those three key principles to expect resistance. Um, and that even though we're doing good things, Satan doesn't want us to make good progress. But number two key principle is that relying on God and the angels that he sends, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Um, and he does send the right people at the right time. And then the third principle is that if we're leveling up, we've got to increase the light coming to us and eliminate things that are dragging us down. Um, because that's what's required as we level up and make positive progress in our lives. There's a favorite scripture that I know I've shared with you before that that I felt. We're going to take a quick break, but when we get back, we'll have more lessons, tips, and things you can apply to your life. Stay tuned. Hey guys, have you started thinking about Mother's Day yet? Every Mother's Day, I am looking for a card or something, a gift to give my mom, my sisters, my friends, and it's hard for me to sometimes find those gifts. And so today I'm so excited to tell you about this booklet, The Mother's Might. It's a perfect, simple, inexpensive gift you can give your friends, your family, your sisters, anyone that you want to share this story with. And it will be meaningful. It's not just a little piece of candy that they eat and forget. It's something they can read over and over again because so often we, as women, feel alone and overwhelmed and burdened and like there's so many things weighing upon our shoulders. And what I love about this story is that it points us to Jesus Christ in our times of trouble, that he understands us, he loves us, he knows what we're going through and he is more than willing to help us bear that burden. And I love that about this story, that it gives not only me hope, but it will convey that sense of hope for all of you. So get your copy of it today, tamarakanderson.com slash store. You can order one, two, 10, 20, however many you want. And we will get those to you so you can get them distributed by Mother's Day. All right, now on to our show. There's a favorite scripture that I know I've shared with you before that, that I felt many times. And I, I, I had to learn to pray for angels and to cast out Satan on a regular basis, <laughs> daily, actually. Um, but I love this verse in Kings, 2 Kings, for chapter 6, verses 16 and 17, as this is when Elisha and his manservant were looking at the city and this attacking army had completely surrounded them. And sometimes we feel like that in life. We feel like we are surrounded by the enemy and his hosts and it's overwhelming. And we're like, I, we're going to die. I can't move forward. <laughs> and here's what Elisha told his servant, fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Lord, I pray thee open his eyes. 
And so I guess that would be maybe a bonus principle is that when we're feeling down and discouraged and like things are not going to go well, um, that we pray that God will open our eyes to see the miracles and the angels around us. There were times when I woke up and I could just feel, I just felt heavy and I would go and I would write about how I felt. And then I would say a quick prayer and say, God, help me to write things I'm thankful for. Help me to see the miracles that are happening despite all this heaviness. And I would end up journaling like two or three pages of things that had happened that were miracles. And, and so sometimes we need to pray when we're feeling heavy that God will open our eyes to the angels and to the miracles that are around us. Ah, oh, how's that for three key principles plus a bonus principle of making positive progress in our lives? All right, I promised I'd also give you an update. Well, let me tell you, I have launched another podcast with some amazing people who are connected to Women Warriors of Light. It's called Bible Women and Bathrobes. <laughs> And seriously, guys, we do record this in our bathrobes at like 6 a.m. It is crazy, but it's a lot of fun. And there's usually two or three of us on there. And we are focusing on two things. We're launching two episodes a week, once on Tuesday morning and once on Thursday morning. The Tuesday mornings, we are talking about lessons from the teachings of Jesus Christ. And we started the Sermon on the Mount a couple of weeks ago. And so we've been just taking them just a few verses at a time. And we're pulling from it lessons we can learn that and apply to ourselves today. So modernizing terms, what does being meek mean, <laughs> you know? And it's been so much fun. I have some an amazing co-host, Bonnie Randall. And she has been awesome. And we brought on women from our advisory board, uh, Women Wars Light Advisory Board, to be on there. And then on Thursday mornings, we are talking about women in the Bible. And um, we have started with Ruth. And we've just been taking it just a little bit at a time as well. I We will be launching episode three this week. So Ruth chapter three. And we're kind of going through her story and and helping explain it, but also drawing principles from the story that we can apply in our lives. Um, we've been blessed to have Heather B. Moore, who is an amazing author, and she wrote a novel about Ruth several years ago, and it, it's been fun to have her on for the historical background. She writes lots of historical books, and so it's been fun to have her on for the last several episodes. And um, it's just been wonderful to get behind my microphone and the video camera again and record podcasts. I have missed it so very much. So I'm excited that I'm back. Um, you're probably wondering, well, are you going to launch more episodes of Stories of Hope? Probably sporadically, I will. I'm not going to promise anything since I'm la already launching two episodes every week <laughs> with Bible women in bathrobes. But I would encourage you to uh, subscribe to Bible women and bathrobes and join us on this journey as we explore and apply the teachings of Jesus Christ and also as we talk about the different women in the Bible. So, um, you don't have to join us live. You don't have to wake up early. You can listen to the podcast, review them, subscribe to us on YouTube. They will go live there as well. Um, so follow Women Warriors of Light on YouTube. Uh, you can check out our website, womenwarriorsoflight.com. We are getting more and more things up and running there every day, every week. And um, I'm just excited that this forward progress has been made. I'm sorry I had to pod this, the podcast again. Um, and it's good to be back. Um, and we will be launching more podcasts for Women Warriors of Light in probably the back half of the year. One of the podcasts that they requested when we did a survey was Modern Women Warriors, which is very similar to what we've done on Stories of Hope. So um, don't worry, we will be launching more and you will not hear the end of me, especially if you subscribe on Bible Women Bathrobes. But um, thanks for joining me and thanks for being a support and a follower of this amazing podcast. Thanks for understanding while I had to take a break to do this big endeavor. Um, 
And uh, just remember that the same principles that I learned apply to you, that even though you may feel some pushback from the adversary, that God is with you and can strengthen you to do anything that you're called to do in life. Um, and we'll send angels and people to help you. So level up, move forward, and pray that God will open your eyes to see those angels and miracles in your life. Thanks for joining us, guys. Hey, thanks so much for listening to today's show. If you like what you heard, subscribe so you can get your weekly dose of powerful stories of hope. I know there are many of you out there who are going through a hard time, and I hope you found useful things that you can apply to your own life in today's podcast. If you would like to access the show notes of today's show, please visit my website, storiesofhopepodcast.com. There you will find a summary of today's show, the transcript, and one of my favorite takeaways. You know, if someone kept coming to mind during today's episode, perhaps that means that you should share this episode with them. Maybe there was a story shared or a quote or a scripture verse that they really, really need to hear. So go ahead and share this podcast. May God bless you, especially if you are struggling with hope to carry on and with the strength to keep going when things get tough. Remember to walk with Christ and he will help you bear the burden. And above all else, remember God loves you.